For sensor, a key skill on the ACT, this is the first of three videos where I'm talking about them. What's really important to understand is the fundamental nature of the percent relationship. And that's expressed by this equation, part equals percent times whole. We could express it two other ways, of course, but I think this is the best to work with. Now, the biggest mistake that people make is that they don't actually use this. So I encourage you to actually write this down on word percent problems. It makes your life a lot easier. Now, the ACT typically asks word-based percent problems. They show up in all sorts of different places and all take all sorts of different forms, but the steps to solving are still the same. You've got to figure out which part is missing, whether it's the part, the percent, or the whole. Plug in the other two parts and solve. That's easier said than done. So there's a helpful guide in the book about words that indicate part and whole, but for the sake of the video, just remember that whole is before the percent is applied, and part is after the percent is applied. Now, even though I'll call it part and whole, the part can be bigger than the whole, as it would be in the case of a tax, an increase, growth, in real world terms. Let's look at the problem on the bottom of the screen. A projector is on sale for 25% off and has a sale price of $300. What was the original price of the projector? Well, we got to figure out where to plug things in. So we know that 25% off, right, is here. It's percent. Okay, so we can plug in 25% here. Now, whole is before the percent's applied, and we have after. So part is $300. Now, you'll notice if you follow along in these calculations, which you should, that this doesn't seem right, because when we divide 25% into 300, we end up with 1,200. That seems ridiculous, and it is. So you have to modify the percent by 100. We're not paying 25% of the original price of the projector. We're paying 100% minus 25%. We're paying 75%. 75% of the cost of the projector. Now, when we divide 75% or 0 0.75 into 300, we'll get $400, which is our correct answer. Let's talk about this problem at length. There's a couple things going on here. First is the assigning of the part and percent, which we talked about before we did the problem. The second thing is the discount, discounting this from 100%. Now, again, words like discount, decrease, uh, decay, all indicate that you'd subtract the percent from 100 Now. A lot of these problems you can solve in two steps. Like, for example, if the problem wasn't this, it was a jacket uh, costs $100 and it's on sale for 20% off, right? You could do this. You could say it's $100 times 20%. Well, that's $20. Okay, that's how much is off. And then I can say 100 dollars minus 20 dollars is 80. And that works just fine with the unmodified percent. You can't really do that on the harder word problems and that's why I picked one for the example because there's no real good way to do that in two steps. Um, there are ways you could do it in two steps but it's just not worth your time. I strongly encourage you to get comfortable with modifying percents from 100. So if it's an increase of tax, growth, whatever, it's 100 plus the percent. If it's decrease, whatever, whatever, it's 100 minus the percent. Be very careful with your decimals. It's very common that I'll have someone say 7% is 0.7 instead of 0 0.07. Remember, percent is per cent per hundred. So it's per hundred, hundred cents in a dollar, hundred years in a century. 
So be very careful. Remember, just move the decimal place twice. Under percent is really just one, right? Everything else is less than one unless it's greater than 100%. Work on modifying your percents. It's the best way to do these problems because not always are you able to do the two-step method that you're most comfortable with probably. There's a ton of problems in the book about this, so check them out. Also, check out the next video on percents. I think you'll find it helpful.